We spoke a little bit about the War of Independence in the previous uh, session. Now, here I want you to uh, take a look at the slide. This was a particular uh, uh, photo from York, Pennsylvania from 1777. And most of um, the generals and most of the leaders that we had here in America back then met here um, in addition to Philadelphia and also um, in their own particular uh, homes. Okay? Now, General Henry Clinton, remember, had his hands full uh, during these times with his strategies, uh, knowing that they were weak, especially with the plans with the Cornwallis to set up a fence in Yorktown, Virginia. Now, when the war started to, um, to really take place and negotiation, and it was coming over, the negotiation started to take place. Okay? And during the peace negotiation, as you could see here in this particular slide, uh, the American well, had the extremely able team to compose uh, certain people, such as John Adams, Benjamin Franklin, and John Jay. And of course, uh, with negotiation did not go smoothly. Um, I mean, France and Great Britain and the Americans and Spain, they were, because they were trying to influence the negotiation with their own special interests. So sometimes some of this negotiation could be very, very, very difficult. But when the American found out, the American's envoy negotiated a separate treaty with Britain, um, you know, this is something that basically started to create some sense in terms of the real concrete negotiation and what we're going to do in terms of being separated from Great Britain. Now, what I want you to take a look at is this particular slide, a very significant stamp okay, that says the Treaty of Paris 1783. The Treaty of Paris of 1783 composed of seven or six different things, right? The first one, okay, so let's take a look at here. The first one is the treaty would state that the United States was recognized as an independent nation by the major European powers, including Spain. That is a complete statement of independency. The second one, the Treaty of Paris would say that its western border boundaries, okay, western boundaries of the United States was set by the Mississippi River, okay. So that Mississippi River would be that particular line, okay, that would set that boundary. Now the southern boundary, okay, here, letter C, was set at 31st degree north latitude, just north boundary of uh, Florida, and that's really where. Uh, most of that southern uh, states uh, are identified. Florida, the Carolinas, Georgia, all the way up uh, again, as I said, um, towards Virginia. The fourth statement that was put into the Treaty of Paris was Britain retained Canada, okay, but had to surrender Florida to Spain. The fifth one is that private British creditors would be free to collect any debts owned by U.S. citizen. And of course, the last one, and Congress was to recommend that the states restore confiscated loyalist property. Now, during the time of the, um, the colonial world, um, you know, there was a lot of loyalists, okay, that obviously um, uh, was taken put aside and their properties were taken away. So in, in many ways, shape or form, this was a real negotiation and this was an agreement where, you know what, if you want the independence that you wanted, America, British, and Great Britain was asking for a middle ground. And basically, the Treaty of Paris of 1783, okay, for the most part, was that middle ground. 